Leslie Lloyd Polk, also known as Jim Brown, was a Jamaican drug lord in charge of an international drug trafficking network involving Jamaica and the United States. He was smart, wise, mature, and with strong political connection to the Jamaica Labour Party JLP. He was highly respected within the garrison community of Tivoli Garden in West Kingston, but he was a man who was also certainly feared. Rightfully so, because he was the founder and crime boss of the notorious gang Shawa Posse, a dangerous gang responsible for numerous killings, drug and arms smuggling, and which at one point received guns, training and transport to the United States by the infamous Central Intelligence Agency, CIA. At the start of the 1990s, the reign of Leslie Lord Polk, popularly called Jim Brown, began drawing to an end. In 1990, the United States Department of Justice indicted Leslie Polk along with some other members of the Shower Posse Gang. The indictment charged Polk with four violations of law. 1. Murder of five persons and one attempted murder. 2. Possession with intent to distribute cocaine and marijuana. 3. Conspiracy to distribute cocaine and marijuana. And 4. Racketeering. Warrants of arrest were issued on February 19, 1991 for the arrest of Lester Koch and the other accused. After being arrested, he was locked up at the General Penitentiary in the capital city Kingston. But the intelligent and wise thinking Lester Koch, aka Jim Brown, did not agree with the extradition request. Under Jamaican laws, he can contest an extradition, and he did, through the courts. Unfortunately, he lost when the judge ruled to have him extradited. Jim Brown was escorted back to prison, and as the date of his extradition gradually approached, so was a deadly plot from among his haters. On Sunday, February 23 of 1992, someone struck a matches stick or flickered a lighter and started a fire in Jim's Brown prison cell. The fire burned, producing stifling smoke. Trapped in such confined place of the prison cell, Jim Brown gasped for fresh air, but the smoke had stolen it. His eyes became staring and roomy. He tried to call out, but repeated coughs kept interrupting. With fire, heat, smoke engulfing his cell, he collapsed. News of his death flashed through Tivoli Garden and also reached the ears of the politicians and the rest of the country. Reactions of fright, sadness, anger, and tears. But it was clear, the era of Lester Lord Coke, aka Jim Brown, was over. But the concern over what exactly happened triggered several serious questions. Was it an accident 
or was Jim Brown murdered? But if it was a murder, there were only three suspects. One, correctional officers. Two, other prisoners. Or three, Jim Brown himself. This is the death registration form of Lester Lloyd Coke, popularly called Jim Brown. I will be looking through his death registration form to see the official cause of death and his basic information. We'll start at the top of the form and at the top of the form it says death registration form death in the district of Kingston parish Kingston. Below that in the first section it says place of death and they wrote Kingston. So, we know he died at the General Penitentiary in Kingston. On the right side, in that section, it says, Usual residence of deceased meaning the permanent residence of the person who died. So it says, usual residence of deceased, and they wrote 13 Crawford Avenue, Constant Spring, St. Andrew. We'll start with the right side of the farm where we will look at his basic information before looking at the official cause of death. On the right side of the form, it says, Particulars of deceased. Date of death, 23rd February 1992. In other words, February 23, 1992. Below that it says, full name, and they put Lester Lloyd Coke. Below that we see sex, and they put Male. So yes, we all know he was male. Um, beside that, we see condition. And condition means marital status. So we see condition and they wrote married. So yes, Lester Lloyd Coke, or as everyone call him, Jim Brown, he was married. Uh, his wife's name was Beverly Coke. Uh, she was popularly called Bev. Yes. Below that we see age. And they wrote... 44. Below that we see occupation or calling, and they wrote businessman. So yes, Lester Coke was a businessman. Below this that we see birthplace, and they wrote Kingston. So yes, he was born in Kingston.
The main reason for studying his death registration form is to see the official cause of his death. What was declared as the official cause of his death? We'll now look at the right side of the form. So here on the right side of the form, it says, Cause of death, immediate cause, and they wrote, Smoke and soot, inhalation. What does that mean? What is actually saying is that he died from smoke, which is the smoke you get from fire, and soot, S-O-O-T, which means the, the remnants of what is burnt. What the, whatever is left after um, there's a fire, that's the suit. In this investigation did not reveal how the fire started. Um, and so people are left to wonder. Was this an accident or was it murder? And thinking about it, how can a fire be started in a prison cell accidentally? I, I don't see how a fire can start in a prison cell accidentally. There would have to be somebody who started that fire. And as I've said in the introduction, there, were, there, there are only three suspects. The correctional officers, other prisoners, or Jim Brown himself. And let's explore those three suspects. One, correctional officers. Were some correctional officers, or maybe one, were paid to get rid of Jim Brown? He, he was to be extradited, and he had a lot of information that could bring down a lot more people. So, was one or more correctional officers paid to light him out? Obviously, he could not just be shot, you know. So, it's an open question. It's not an accusation. Was one or more correctional officer paid to eliminate Jim Brown. Let's look at the, th the second suspect. Other prisoners. Now, I've recently, I've recently seen videos where other prisoners have l lit fires. And tried to harm other prisoners. So, were there prisoners in... The, the general penitentiary who just wanted to see Jim Brown dead. They cannot be eliminated from the suspicion. That's a possible, um, a possibility that other prisoners deliberately set fire to his cell. Then the third suspect is Jim Brown himself. Remember, he was about to be extradited. He knew he would have been sentenced 
for a very long time in U.S. prisons. Not an accusation. I mean, there, there weren't enough options for him. He couldn't have chose a gun or a knife or jump off of a bridge. So could he have been the one who set fire to himself and call it a day? I'm not making any accusations. I'm just saying that there are three suspects. There's, there, there can't be any more. Unless you're talking about there was an electric short circuit or something and the fire started and that was not the case. This fire was started by human hands. And those hands were among either the correctional officers, the other prisoners, or Jim Brown himself. The culprit lies somewhere among those three suspects. Thanks for watching, and remember to like, comment, or subscribe for more interesting videos like this.